All righty. Hello, everyone. I'm going to wait a few, uh, a little bit for everyone to log on to Zoom. For anyone joining us on Facebook, welcome. Um, we're going to get started shortly once we have enough people added into our attendees. Welcome to our um, I Spy for Conservation, help identify wildlife in online images. Uh, so I started live a bit. Mm -hmm. Only probably like 30 seconds and then we'll get started. Um, for anyone who is on Facebook currently, uh, we will share the Zoom registration links that you can uh, get on through Zoom if you would like to. Uh, we're going to be talking through the platform Instant Wild today and doing a demonstration of one of the projects, which will be super fun. Um, so if you're looking for an interactive um, activity right now, um, we are happy to help you out with that. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and get us started then. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, for anyone who has been here in our events before, um, just to get us started, we'll talk through who all is here um, before we move on to anything else. So uh, my name is Emma Giles. I'm a program coordinator for SciStarter. Um, I'm also a graduate student at Arizona State University, um, and I host the majority of these events along with um, two of my colleagues. Roland, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Roland, also program coordinator for SciStarter. I'll be posting uh, some useful links today during the webinar. Excellent. And then our other uh, colleague who hosts these events isn't here today, but if you recognize the name Trevor, he'll be back at another one. Uh, before we introduce our guest, just to get ourselves started on using the live webinar format, um, there is a chat and a Q&A function. Um, so you can chat us any random questions or thoughts or memories, uh, whatever you'd like to do to connect with those of us on the call. Um, the Q&A is for if you have questions about citizen science, about SciStarter, or about the, um, the platform of Instant Wild in general and we will get to those as we keep moving. Um, if it makes sense to stop and address those questions in the moment, we will. Otherwise, just know we have a spot to answer any extra questions at the very end uh, if we need to. Awesome. Uh, just so we know that we know how to use the chat, go ahead and write into the chat your name and where you're Zooming in from. I'll go ahead and start that one. So I'll say I'm Emma from Phoenix, Arizona. We often have international people. Hey, Central Washington. Nice, Megan. Happy to have you. Bill, welcome. Another Seattle, or another Washington anyway. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. All right, well, that's happening. I'm going to get us moving uh, so we can talk to Kate. Kate, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, yes. Thank you very much for having me here this evening. Uh, I am a conservation scientist and project manager in um, ZSL, so the Zoological Society of London, in the Monitoring and Technology Programme, uh, where we sort of work to apply innovative tech to enhance the sort of effort of society's conservationists and, and scientists. Tongue twister. <laughs> awesome. Um, are you are you in London right now? Is that where you are? I am in London right now. Yes. Okay, you said in the evening. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's right. It's the London Zoo. <laughs> I had to rethink that one. That's so funny. Um, that's awesome. Well, I'm so glad you were able to join us. What time is it exactly in London? It's just after seven o'clock, so not too late. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm glad it's not later. Although I, um, our our friend here, Roland, is definitely on a later time zone. Roland, is it nine for you still? Yeah, it's nine. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. I'm so glad to have so many time zones on a call. It's so fun. Um, awesome. Okay. Thank you for introducing yourself. Uh, just to get a good idea of who we're talking to today, uh, we have a couple polls just to uh, get a check in on who, who you are and what you are um, already familiar with. So if you've ever participated in a citizen science project before, we're looking for that information. Um, and Roland, oh yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yay. And then Roland put the, uh, the poll in the page or in the webinar so you can answer that oh awesome all right so far everyone who's answered has done a citizen science project before that's awesome awesome cool okay so a few of you have not um 
I have not done a citizen science project before. That's really great. It sounds like we're starting from a good from a good spot, um, knowledgeable spot. Um, have you ever been to a SciStarter live event before? Those are these events. So we have them once a week on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, um, U.S. Eastern. Um, and then for me, I'm over on the couple hours before that. So it's noon for me, et cetera. If you've ever been to these events before, we do a project every single time. And perfect, thank you. <laughs> awesome, so it looks like we're about split. That's interesting. The majority of you have not though, so that's good to know. Um, hopefully we will recruit you as uh, consistent viewers then after this. <laughs> All right, last but not least, we wanna know what type of person you are. Are you someone who is an aspiring citizen scientist? Are you a parent of one? Are you a student? Are you an educator, a librarian, um, researcher, project leader, board person on the internet, always an option? how we get at least one person almost every time. <laughs> I see aspiring citizen scientists and teachers, cool. Awesome. I see about 60% of you have participated. I wanna bring it to 80% if we can. I'll wait a couple seconds, almost there. Looks like we're all in the same, same boat though, aspiring citizen scientists and teachers, educators, troop leaders, et cetera. That's awesome. All right, welcome everyone. Happy to have you here. All righty. So um, before we talk about um, the project and the platform uh, that Kate will be telling us about, I do want to get us uh, on the same like uh, background of, of citizen science. So um, our definition of citizen science is a collaboration between scientists and those of us who are curious, concerned, and motivated to make a difference. It's how people can make an impact on issues they care about and help science. Um, there are quite a few um, definitions, or you probably have heard a few um, thrown out there. There's also different names for citizen science, so just know that as long as you are um, gathering information in your environment or helping um, interpret information um, that heads back to a scientist, you're doing citizen science. Um, which is pretty great. Uh, and the first part of being a part of citizen science and getting really involved, even if you already have done a citizen science project, the number one thing to actually um, get started and keep the momentum is to uh, sign up for SciStarter. And we're actually going to do this today um, to help you understand how the connection between um, SciStarter and the platforms we use, such as Instant Wild, works. Um, so we're going to actually get you set up today if you're not already signed up. Um, so we'll walk through that process in a little bit. But the big idea is that we are a database full of projects. So all kinds of projects that you can find that you're curious about any subject, you can use our project finder um, to look up anything such as like, I don't know, if you looked up penguins, I think I did that once and found 13 different projects. So um, just know that there's something out there for everyone um, and they're all really fun to do. So uh, you can head on over to scistar.org to find those. Um, in addition to simply hosting um, a connection to all the citizen science projects out there. Uh, we also have training. So if you ever find yourself in need of a little bit more confidence in working on certain projects, maybe you need some more um, information on what citizen science is, um, or if you'd like to just get some professional development and learn more, um, we have trainings for you. The Foundations of Citizen Science training is a super, super useful training. Um, it teaches you the foundations and tracks or, or helps you understand them in the context of specific projects. It's really quite um, helpful. Um, in addition to that one, once you've done the foundations training, you actually have access to all the rest of them, which include these four. Um, so you have the building data literacy, my personal favorite, um, the libraries is community hubs. If any of you are librarians, I think we didn't have any. No, we didn't have any. Um, but if we, uh, if you ever go to a library, you'll find um, citizen science kits there on occasion. And oftentimes they are uh, librarians uh, trained by this program of libraries as community hubs for citizen science to best um, support the patrons. Um, and then we have two others, the higher education and data ethics for practitioners. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to talk about the platform Instant Wild. Um, I wore my, uh, what is it? Gosh. So that, yeah, I wore my uh, lion shirt for this, or tiger shirt, excuse me. I wore my tiger shirt so that I could be on theme for this, and I'm super excited. Um, and Kate, I'm going to let you go ahead and take over um, the information about Instant Wild. Just let me know when you'd like me to switch slides. Great. Thank you very much, Emma. And yeah, thanks very much for having me. Um, so yeah, I'm here to tell you guys a bit more about exactly what Instant Wild is and how it works. Um, essentially, it is an online platform and app that connects users like you or me to wildlife through camera trap images. Um, and we have a mix of live and non-live camera traps deployed around the world that take those images that you end up then seeing on the platform. Um, 
and by users logging on and IDing the species in the images, it enables them to make meaningful contributions to conservation, all whilst getting an insight into what animals get up to when people aren't around. Um, and for me, the, like, the thing that I think is the best bit about Instant Wild is that you don't need to be worried about being a wildlife expert. So you can take part no matter what your level of ex experience or expertise is, but I'll come back to that point later. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I guess, um, why is Instant Wild necessary, like in terms of the challenge that it's addressing? Um, so we all know, sadly, that globally, that wildlife is declining at an alarming rate. And we, as conservationists, can't protect wildlife without first understanding it. So, for example, where they live, how they behave and interact, what size groups they live in, amongst like lots of other things. They're all important questions that we need to know the answer to. So as conservationists, we monitor wildlife to determine these things. And then once we have an idea of the answers to those initial questions or baselines, we keep monitoring those to see if there are any changes. For example, um, if population numbers are increasing or decreasing, and then we can take action if needed. Um, in order to do this monitoring work, we've got a number of methods and technologies available to help us with this, uh, one of which is the camera trap, which proves to be a very popular tool. Um, so camera traps, which are shown in the image on the left, are great tools for conservationists. Um, they can be deployed for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They don't need to have meal breaks or go to the bathroom or don't like it when it snows. They just keep working. They're very reliable. So they're ideal for that. Um, and essentially what they are is a, a digital camera that's connected to an infrared sensor, which can essentially can sort of see warm objects that move past, including animals. Um, and when that animal moves past the sensor, it causes the camera to fire, which records an image which can either be transmitted from that camera back to the user through the phone networks, or it can be stored on the camera trap. Um, and they can be left in the field to continuously watch an area of habitat for weeks or even months. Um, like I said, they don't need to, to rest. They can work through all weathers through day and night. So much more reliable than people. And they don't, um, don't have sort of the observer effect, whereas people would disturb wildlife. They don't have this. So they're able to record events that we would be unlikely to be able to observe in person. Um, and looking at that image of the camera trap. Um, so they tend typically they follow the same sort of format. They consist of firstly the lens, so that's the circle in the middle. So with that slightly ready pink hue, which takes the image when triggered. The infrared sensor is the sort of black rectangular shaped area beneath that. So that's the bit that I said it, it's detecting the, the warmth of the animal that's moving past the camera, and that's what then triggers the camera to take the picture. And then the, the top window with the mesh across it is the flash array. So we use uh, infrared flash in camera traps. So that means that unlike, for example, if you're taking a, an image on your phone, when you would see the flash trigger with infrared, infrared, we don't see that. So it minimizes the chance of disturbing species and altering their behavior or movements. Um, and is really useful for sort of broad sampling of wildlife. There are a few instances when we would use that white flash that we sort of typically recognize and associate with camera traps with cameras, sorry, not camera traps. Um, but that's more when you're looking to track very specific individuals. So if you've got, if you need a very crisp, clear image where you need to be able to recognize a tiger pattern to know that that is tiger X, then that's maybe where you might risk disturbing the animals and using that, that white flash. But normally the, the animals don't see that flash going off. Um, and as I mentioned before, they, they can provide 24 hours a day, seven days a week monitoring in any conditions. And so because of that, um, they are used in large scale monitoring efforts to determine things like species locations, population sizes. Um, and as a result of that, they can then monitor changes in populations or the presence or absence of certain species. However, they generate huge numbers of images. So they're triggered by any kind of motion and normally take, you can set them up depending on how you want to, but typically, you take at least a burst of three images when it's triggered so that can be an awful lot of images come back um over time if they're out for months at a time which yeah and you get these huge number of images and normally there's only a very small team of people who can process them 
which that generally means that useful data isn't then extracted from those camera trap images for a long period of time. Um, so this is where people like you come in, your solution to the problem. Um, citizen scientists such as yourselves provide us with huge amounts of people power, like which can't be underestimated, like the impact that it has. Um, so by making those images from the camera traps available to users on Instant Wild, we're able to process sort of considerable numbers of images and the resulting data can then be used to aid the monitoring efforts and generate conservation actions more quickly than it would have been if like we had to sort through that ourselves in like a tiny team of one or two scientists. Um, and as you can see from the image on the right hand side, we have a variety of projects on the site. There are currently about 20 projects there, um, some of which still have live images coming through, some of which aren't, they've sort of finished, but we keep them up there just so people can learn about the habitats and the landscape. But what that essentially means is that it's possible for you to travel the globe as a virtual volunteer um, from the comfort of your own home, from your sofa, if you're on the bus. Um, if you've got 10 minutes in between classes, you can tag some animals. It's a fantastic way of sort of getting an insight into a world that you wouldn't necessarily be able to see otherwise. And each of those projects that we have on the, the platform aims to answer different research questions using camera traps, which, as I said, you can help with. So it's win-win. Not only are we helping to uh, produce more data, it means that like, as the users, you get these incredible images, you get to see these beautiful species, these weird and wonderful species as well that you wouldn't necessarily normally see, um, see what they get up to when people aren't around, which is all sorts of fun things. We've had fantastic images up on the site, of, yeah, all sorts of wonderful examples. Like, um, so things that we've got up there at the moment, for example, that are live, include monitoring populations of sharks, skates and rays in Wales. Um, understanding the impacts of reduction in available habitat for the San Joaquin Fox in California and monitoring trackside wildlife along train lines near London, amongst many more. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, before we move forward, Roland asked a quick question that I'm also interested in. Has Have these camera tracks, uh, traps ever been attacked by the animals? Oh, absolutely. My goodness. Wonder, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wouldn't say like, so we, yes, we had a live, we had a fantastic, it wasn't a typical camera trap, like the one on the image at the moment. Um, we were trialing some new technology that can take video clips that was really clear, wonderful pictures. We had that deployed in Croatia and um, within a, a rock escarpment. And so you'd see the bears come past or the chamois quite often. Um, but at one point there were sort of paws that came across it and then it starts to get knocked and then it tumbles a little bit and then it just, you see the, like, the view, it just bounces down the hill. The same with elephants. Um, I haven't camera chat with baboons, but I believe they're particularly curious and intrigued, but all sorts of animals, they typically, I mean, I think that even if we deploy them in a very uh, a way that's sort of quite hidden, they can smell human scent, they're intrigued, they know when there are changes in their habitat and so they will sometimes it's curiosity sometimes it can be and um, yeah i guess it's generally always curiosity just sometimes they're quite strong when they're curious right that's too <laughs> funny them. Yeah. i love it okay um so yeah i guess in terms of the main goals or aims of insta wild as i mentioned we yeah it's to use people power we recognize that there are this problem with these we need to understand what's going on in the natural world using camera traps to do this and that generates huge huge amounts of data like huge numbers of images and um, so for example there's a project from Borneo on the platform that had around 36,000 images um, and like on a recent camera trap deployment that I took part in which isn't on Instant Wild we got back 110,000 images and that was half compared to the previous grid that was deployed so you can see the numbers of pictures that are coming through so it's like really tapping into people power to tag the species in the images is just such a key part of Instant Wild to aid researchers in answering those questions that they've set out to do using um, camera traps. And although I would say that like machine learning is improving in terms of being able to ID the species in the images, the, the natural world has such a huge range of species and 
um, like the models are incredibly complex. So I think there'll be people power will still be needed for quite a considerable amount of time yet. Um, and then secondly, our other goal within the project is to connect people with wildlife. As I mentioned at the start, we know that biodiversity is declining at like massively high rates that were previously unseen. And at the same time, there's this growing disconnect between people and nature. And through Instant Wild, we're aiming to address this by um, providing users with an insight into the natural world. Um, like not only does it allow users a glimpse into otherwise unseen worlds, like I was talking about the project in Wales where it's under the water, you get incredible footage, really beautiful blue crystal clear waters, which I did not expect to see off the Welsh coast, but it's fantastic. And all sorts of small shark species swimming past, but it also provides learning opportunities. So. I guess in terms of ecosystems and habitats that users might come across or learning about new species and taxonomy and the ways that animals are classified it also raises awareness of the weird and wonderful species that are out there as a biologist writing the um sort of library that we use to tag species against like the borneo project i was coming across things i had never heard of they're incredible there's all sorts of weird wonderful things out there so that's really cool um and it can give you an insight into animal behavior as well to sort of see all sorts of fun things going on that you wouldn't yeah expect them to get up to but they get caught on camera um and yeah you can find out more about each project what it is that they're aiming to achieve how it is that they're doing this and who they're partnering with. Um, and I'd say most importantly, not only connecting with wildlife, but it gives people the opportunity to feel like they're doing something towards that. They're actively contributing towards research that is helping to address the biodiversity crisis. It's helping to push forward our understanding of the natural world and it allows people without expertise to do that, which I think is a really cool element of the platform. And also, sort of as an aside, it was created, it's not one of the project goals now, but it was initially, it was done as a proof of concept. It was Instant Wild was the first platform to connect live camera traps out in the field that sent images back to the platform in re real time through the phone network. It was a, a trial and error and it worked. And not only did it work, but it was successful. Like it's gone on to be a success. And we sort of continued to build on that. Um, I would say we've still got the one project that uses the live camera traps um, that we will be looking at later this evening, the Osa Conservation Network in Costa Rica um, from Ocho Verde, where you tend to like often find uh, ocelot, like the one in this image. Um, but there has been a shift in camera trap technology that means that it's less easy for us to feature the live images. So typically now what we do, other than the, the project in Costa Rica is we upload images from data sets that conservationists, conservationists have collected using non-connected camera traps so we just push those up to the site. Can I have a next? What that guy is. <laughs> it's an awesome yeah, little ocelot we get a, it no comes by the, often enough that the owner of the area have they've got like a little name for it I can't remember the name I wish I could but yeah it's sort of regularly spotted on the camera trap and she's beautiful. Yeah, she's adorable. Wow, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess in terms of why people should get involved and, yeah, the key part of, you know, without the citizen scientists, Instant Wild just wouldn't work. Um, so, yeah, like, our success is entirely down to our wonderful citizen scientists. Um, so, yeah, I guess in terms of Instant Wild, one of my absolute favourite things about it is that it was built with inclusivity in mind. So as I mentioned earlier, no expertise is required at all in order to take part. Um, so the idea is that we want your best guess and that users can learn as they go along. And the way that we're able to do that is we use a proven consensus in the algorithm in the background of the app. So that means until 10 users have tagged the image as having, for example, one elephant in it, a result isn't generated for that project scientist. So it doesn't matter if you are four years old and sometimes confuse elephants and rhinos. The idea is that as a community, we can work together to get it right. Um, so yeah, please do give us your best guess and don't forget that we were all beginners once. 
Um, right. Yeah, and then if you've registered for an Instant Wild account rather than a guest user, which you will have done, as this allows you to link your it to your size data account, this also means that you as a user can view the number of idents that you've made, you can see your accuracy score, you can track the number of endangered species that you've tagged, and then you can also sit, see where it is that you sit on that leaderboard within the Instant Wild users. And also as a, a registered Instant Wild user, that means that you can write comments underneath the images and handily Instant Wild has the most wonderful, welcoming, warm, kind community of users who are always help like happy to help each other out so if you get to an image and you're not sure if that's a coyote or a wolf or maybe a marge or an ocelot then you can leave a comment under the image and someone will help you to answer your question can i have the next slide please So yeah, like how to get involved. Um, so Instant Wild can either be accessed via the web, so instantwild.zsl.org, but we'll link through from the site starter pages, or it's free to download from the app stores that we do currently have an issue with the Apple version. We're working on getting that fixed as soon as possible. Um, and yes, as I mentioned previously, it's the best thing to do is to register for an account. So you can link it to your site starter account and then you'll be able to track the contributions made across both platforms. Um, and yeah, thank you so much to everyone who's already taken part. We really, really do appreciate each and every one of your contributions. Like every ident that you guys make really does help to make a difference. Um, so far we've had over, goodness, it's nearly 4 million observations made by scientists like you and like the data generated has been used to understand predator population numbers. It's, been used to determine the presence of invasive species, it's been used to document the species within a landscape and sort of build up a basic understanding, and it's produced data that sort of feeds into biodiversity action plans or species management plans, so please do keep up the great work. Right then, next slide please. Okay, first of all, take a look at this picture. <laughs> I love this. I'm so glad you had this. Um, okay, before we move forward with um, trying out the project, uh, because it is an integration between SciStarter and Instant Wild, uh, we want to make sure it's very easy to uh, integrate the two and get you through the steps to actually um, get credit for all of your um, your hard work that you do on Instant Wild. So I'm going to walk through that process. You are more than welcome, even recommended to do the process along with my description of it. Um, I'll also share my screen of myself doing it to my own account um, to make it even easier as well right afterwards. Um, and then I'll give another second to look at this wonderful, I'm assuming it's a fox, right? It is a fox, yep, that is uh, in London near the railway lines. And we just got this fantastic sequence and we thought we'd make a little gift from it because he looked like he was having a great time. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, okay, <laughs> love it. All right, so in order to get started with um, connecting, so I started Instant Wild. Um, the reason we do this, by the way, um, when we have affiliate projects, um, like the ones that we have through Instant Wild, we have about seven of them that are affiliates um, on SciStarter. This allows us to, or allows you to track your contributions over time. So you can see how often you contribute. Um, you can see when you contribute in the year um, and really make some good, uh, some good, uh, what's the right word for it? You can see how much you're contributing over time. So it's like service hours if you um, want to uh, provide to an organization to volunteer, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of reasons to have all that data on yourself just so you can use it to your own benefit. Um, and so having that on your dashboard uh, means that you would have to have an account. So before you do anything else, it's important that you have a SciStarter account. So if you haven't already, um, roll and just drop to the SciStarter.org slash login into the chat. If you click on that one, this screen will appear. Um, I already have an account, so I would just log in using these. Um, but for anyone who doesn't have one yet, it asks for your email and a password um, and a, a postal code and then gives you a couple other options for a newsletter and such. Um, for now, if you're trying to save time, just so you can keep track with us, um, only some of them are required for the time being and you can always add more information uh, later on as well. Um, and I'm going to move forward in a couple of seconds here. If you at all, at any point during this process, by the way, since it is, there are steps here, if you want me to slow down, um, you can just type a random word into the chat as a 
like, I don't know, a freak out of uh, typing a bunch of letters at once. That that works. I'll know what you mean. <laughs> As someone who taught fifth grade during COVID's beginning online, it was, I'm used to that. Um, so once you are there, once you've logged in, and I'll try to tread water a little bit while we are doing that, we're going to direct you to the um, scistar.org slash OSA camera trap network. Um, this is a specific instant wild project. Um, we're going to be testing this one out uh, with Kate sharing her screen to show uh, sh show how it works. Um, but there are several. So the instant wild, if you were to type instant wild into our project finder, for example, you'd find all seven um, listed on there that are affiliates. Um, and you can also um, see the rest of them there that are active as well. Um, when they become active, we'll have more logging in, et cetera. It's just a constant like partnership between the two. So um, the one that we'll be working on today, though, the OSA camera trap network, um, we'll actually put that into the chat momentarily so you can follow it there. Um, once you get there, you can't, you, you don't have to have, um, you don't have to be logged in to see this page. Anyone with, um, who's looking at SciStar can see any of the projects, um, but just by logging in allows us to do that integration, making sure that the two can connect and you can get credit for your work. Um, so once you're there and would you mind dropping that one? Oh, you did already. I'm just going to drop it one more time on underneath the login one. So that was the OSA camera trap network. Once you're on that page, I just want to bring your attention over here. Um, there's a visit button. There's also a save to review later. By saving to review later, it'll go onto your dashboard. Um, and in order to get us started, once it's on your dashboard, so from here, I hit save to review later, and then it will end up on your dashboard. So that changes to just say visit your dashboard. Um, we're going to hit this visit button to go over to Instant Wild. Um, so once you're on here, um, you can hit the visit button and it will send you straight to Instant Wild. No way a moment here. Reminder again. If you're doing this with me, you can type random letters if I go too fast. <laughs> okay. Um, just a note too, whatever email address you signed up for your SciStar account, that's the important part. We'll need that information for um, when we get to Instant Wild. I might have flipped those. When you logged into SciStarter, that email is what you'll need for Instant Wild. All right. So if you were to hit this button, um, it will send you to this page, um, which is also going to be dropped into the chat, I believe. I might have put it on a different slide, so it might come back up. Um, so once you are sent to Instant Wild, um, it'll send you to the project, but before you even start the project, in order to combine the or to match up the accounts, you'll need to add it to your, uh, you'll have to have an account on, or uh, register, excuse me, you use the term register, register for an account on Instant Wild. Um, and connect the profile. So up, up here in the top right hand corner of the page that you'll see, um, profile will actually just send you straight to this page um, if you're not already logged in. So if you have an account, you might be in luck and it'll just say, oh, here's your profile. <laughs> and you can look at it. Um, if you are not already signed in, it will send you here. I had to hit the login button or register button when I first started and add in my information. Um, take note, uh, when you are signing up for an account, when you register, it needs to be the same email and it's case sensitive for your SciStarter account. So the one that you used to create your SciStarter account, that's the same one you're gonna use for Instant Wild. That's the connection that we um, use to uh, track your contributions and let you see how, how well you're doing over time. I'm ready. Slowing down my talking for a moment. No questions so far. <laughs> that means good things. Um, okay. All right, I'm gonna move forward. As a reminder, I'll also go through this on my end, uh, what it looks like on my screen as well. Um, once you have signed in, you can go back to profile because you'll see an option to change your settings. And this is where you'll connect to the account. So beyond just adding your email in there, you also need to just confirm which account um, your SciStar account there. So this gear icon in the corner, this is my, my login, that's my username. Um, when I go to my profile, this will show up this gear icon. Um, and I'm going to tap that one because once I tap that, if I scroll down, I'll see SciStar integration. The name SciStar is there. If you hit control F, you'll be able to find it super fast by typing it in too. Um, so SciStar integration um, allows us to just track them together. We'll link the two projects. So every time you do anything on Instant Wild, SciStar will know, so it'll it'll log that contribution for you. So this is um, the instructions you'll be given, so pretty easy. SciStarter account email address. So same one you use to create your SciStarter account, you just use it right here. Also, just FYI, this is the first time and the only time you'll have to do this. Once this is connected, this process, 
done. You don't have to do it again. Um, the Once these are linked, it'll be set forever and you'll be good to go uh, because then you don't have to, you don't even have to log into this. I started to get back to Instant Wild. So if Instant Wild is your thing and you just want to do Instant Wild all day, which like good, awesome, thumbs up. Um, once you do that, you can just go straight to Instant Wild uh, because your accounts will be linked automatically via your email. Um, so we'll know about it and you'll be able to see it on SciStarter, but you don't have to actually have SciStarter, SciStarter open in order to see your uh, your work on instant wild uh, communicate over. Okay. So once we have your SciStarter account email in here, um, it will um, be done. That's it. You can hit save at the bottom and then um, you can go back to the project. Uh, now you might need to, uh, just in case you need the link again to get to the project, that OSA camera trap network, um, you can go straight um, back to that one, which is what Roland just put into the chat. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Um, you can go straight back to that link. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share momentarily so that I can demonstrate what this looks like in real time for anyone who's like, uh, what? Um, so let me go to scistar.org slash login, and then I'll share my screen again. Go. Alrighty. So um, on scistar.org slash login, I am at this link right now. Um, uh, Roland, can you give me a thumbs up? You can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. So I have my email address in here that I use for SciStarter and my password. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Once I'm logged in, it's my wonderful picture. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the OSA project. You can also type in the quick navigate. We gave you a link instead, but you can always just find a keyword from the name and drop it in the quick navigate. Once I'm here, as I said before, it's saved to my dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and visit and continue on. Okay, now that I'm here, um, I can see the project, but I need to make sure that my profiles are connected. So on the top right hand side, yes, okay, sorry. Can you go to Instant Wild and link SciStarter? Or should we go through SciStarter every time? You only have to do it once. You can go to Instant Wild. If you already have a SciStarter account, that's a great question. Um, if you already have a SciStarter account, just simply going to your profile on Instant Wild, creating the account first, um, creating the account on Instant Wild, and then um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Once you, if you go to Instant Wild first and create your account with the same email you know you used for your already existing account on SciStarter, you're good to go. They'll still link. You don't have to go through SciStarter if you already know um, that you have an account and you remember your email. Um, you don't have that. You don't have to have it open. You just need to know the email. Yeah. Did that answer your question, Tracy? Sorry, that was probably too many sentences. <laughs> okay. Let me keep going. So I already logged in before, so I'm going to go ahead and re-log back in. Um, the registration process is super quick too, so it'll just be a different page that you see. Um, yes, thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Tracy. Let me know if I need to um, rephrase. So once I've done that, now I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh oh, if I hit start tagging, there we go. Okay. So once I hit start tagging, it'll take me to all the projects again. I'm going to go back to profile so we can see what changed. So now that I'm logged in, my profile actually has something. It didn't send me back to sign in. So if I go to the gear, I can see here's my information, my username, my email. Um, I can change my password if I need to. Aha, here it is. So SciStart integration, I use my SciStart account email address to gain reward points by participating. I'm going to go ahead and tap my email in here and then say connect accounts. Pending, pending. Aha. Yay, that's exactly what we want to see. Your size starter account is linked. Um, and then once I do that, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom just for fun to see if anything else is here. So I can delete my account here. I can download my information. Um, you can log out here. You can revoke. Um, if you don't want size starter attached, there's a revoke. So you can turn it on or off, depending. I don't know, maybe your cousin is using your computer and you don't want his work to be credited on your account. Um, Oh, <laughs> not sure why. Um, all right. So once I've done that, I now need to go back to projects because I need to go find the one that we were going to do. So we were going to do the OSA camera trap network. I could hit this button again, like go back to SciStarter and find it again. Um, but just in case any of you are just looking through, scrolling through um, all of these, my easy method is just control F for OSA and see where it pops up and boom, there it is. So that's how I find mine. Um, but you can scroll through and see all of these. Again, there's about, I think there's seven of them, Roland, correct me if I'm wrong, there's seven that are connected as affiliates with SciStarter. So if you do 
try out one of these projects and it's not an affiliate, it won't track. Um, but once it becomes affiliates in the future, then it will be tracking and whatnot. So it's an ever evolving um, platform. So you can still do, I mean, every single project you do on here will be helpful to um, these projects. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on this one. And now I'm back. Okay. A lot of words, a lot of talking, a lot of rambling. Any steps that we are lost on, please let me know. I can also review this at the end if we need to as well. Okay, cool. Alrighty, I'm going to stop my share for a moment and bring, it, bring us back to the um, presentation. So while we do, actually, I'm, I'm just going to send it over to um, Kate to do the demonstration with us instead. Uh, but just to give you a little bit more information before then, while Kate is going through a demonstration of this project and talking through um, what, what we're looking at, how to answer things, uh, maybe asking us questions about what we think so we can help her answer these questions, um, keep in mind uh, there is a Q&A section, but you are more and more than welcome to actually ask um, questions during this time so we can address them while we're looking at the project. Um, so if anything comes up, you can ask them um, in the chat or in the q and I'll keep an eye out for those um, while we do this. Um, last check really fast if anyone needs assistance with the logging in and connecting the accounts. This is recorded, so you can always review it later, along with the slides that have the step-by-step -step process. Okay. All right. Well, ask anytime, anyhow. All right. Back to you, Kate. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, as Emma mentioned, we've got the seven affiliate size data projects on here. Uh, some of which are sort of th throughout this option, but on this projects page or something I wanted to highlight was the, the option to follow projects that you are interested in that effectively curate your feed. So for example, like a social media feed, so if you are really interested in seeing Kenyan wildlife, then I would encourage you to follow the Lol Diger Hills and the Lewa um, projects, and then you'll get the images that come through from Kenya. So as a way of um, sort of curating what it is that you're interested in. But as we mentioned tonight, we're going to look at the Osso Camera Trap Network. Um, so in terms of the projects, we have a little bit of information, just the name, the location here, and then just a, a really high level. So you've got an understanding of what it is that the researchers are trying to find out about. So here, yeah, so we can see that they're looking about trying to understand uh, the abundance of wildcats and their prey in the Ossa Peninsula in Costa Rica. If you're interested and want to find out more, we've got lots more information for you here, including links, um, things like that. Yeah, sort of any collaborations. So we've got like, because it's a camera trap network, that's almost like a little consortium. It's got different um, people taking part within it. So that gives you the, the opportunity to read more about their work and who it is that's partnering doing that. Also, then we've got the sort of high level stats of the images on the project. So this project has in total 20,390 images, of which a vast majority have been identified, but there are these 37 un unidentified images here. As I mentioned previously, this is our only project that does still have the, the live camera traps that do feed through via the, the phone network comes through um, to the platform. Um, we've got a little bug in the system. So our oldest one is 12 days ago. And here we can see uh, Frank, who is the owner. He quite often spot Frank on the camera trap images. Um, he is out at night looking for all kinds of herbs. He's really into to snakes and all sorts of things like that. But I will show you on, we had a couple of really beautiful images, including that ocelot that came through before. But on this image, so I will select this image. Um, and as I mentioned, I don't want to show you that now, actually, I'll give it away. OK, um, so you've got the ability to expand your image using that magnifying glass just there. Let me come out of that. Uh, and then we have the option. You might know what that you might look at that and automatically know what species that is but you might not so we have the ability to sort of toggle and refine what it is if you thought it was a bird you could do that you only get bird options down here as it is i'm going to go into small medium mammal because i think that that is our our best shot it's most likely where we'll see a match within that species library um, and then just to highlight within these so 
because I spend a lot of time looking at camera trap images from Costa Rica, I know that this is a Terra. Like we see them occasionally on these camera traps. They're really cool. I think it's quite unusual. Got this lovely bushy tail because we do. There is also a Jaguarundi, which you sometimes see on these camera traps, but um, they tend to like they're a, although they are similar, they, there are diff key differences. And one of those is like they tend to have this bushier tail, whereas a Jaguarundi has quite a sleek tail and slightly different shaped head. But yeah, so once you identified what it is that you think or whilst you're trying to work that out, what you can do is click on the eye here. Um, so again, you see the picture here, it gives you the, the Latin name. So if you wanted to uh, find out more, you can always copy and paste and pop that in your browser. It shows the, the red list status. So this is how concerned we are about this particular species. Like as it is, the, the Taylor is least concerned, which is great. So within this landscape, there aren't particular threats to it. It's, it's doing okay, which is really nice to hear. Again, we've got a short high level description, but we also have the option to read a bit more, which might give you sort of additional information that can help you to sort of drill down into it if that's what it is that you think it is, you can find out more information. So I'm confident that that is a Terra. So I would go here and I would select tag. There's only the one in the image. If there were more, we could do that. We can toggle up or down and we can also add, for example, if I think there's also an armadillo sat over here, um, which there isn't, but you could, I could do that. I could do, like I can get rid of that, but if I wanted to, so you can have multiple species within the same image. Um, but as it is, it's just got the one, it's got the table there. So I've just done one and um, which we've got down here and then I can just hit confirm item. And just like that, it will work. Here we go, identification made. This has then taken me to the next image within that project. I don't know about you, like the way I do it, like it's quite often one of the tricks finding them is you quite often see eye, the reflections of two eyes is a good way of locating the animal. But I can't sometimes they're a little bit slow to trigger or they'll trigger after the animals just move past. I can't see anything in that one. So in this case, I can go with no animal and also as a time save we have same as last so if you have that same one table in here you could just do that whereas this one i'm going to tag as having no animal there you go and again just takes you on to the next oh i shouldn't have done that sorry uh it takes you on to the next one and also there you can see at the bottom it's sort of creeping up the number of idents that you've made today so once you hit 40 you'll be one of the the top spotters of the day um, but yeah, so that's how you just sort of takes you through to the next, the way that it works, the um, algorithm in the background. So as I mentioned before, we use the, the 10 people being in agreement on the species. So what it's always doing is serving you up the next image that needs to be tagged for that to become a confirmed result. So it's always trying to tick over and generate more and more results. So yeah, it will take you through those most recent images that need doing to allow them to become a, a result for the project. I don't know if anybody has any questions or if you'd like me to demo a bit more. Uh, Kate, actually, I have a question about this picture specifically, and then Roland had a question about the accuracy scores. Um, but that picture, since it's so blurry, what would you recommend there? Like I could assume it's a small mammal, but otherwise, mm -hmm. like it looks like the Terra again, but I, I wouldn't know. How do you gain confidence in how to respond to these types of I think, like I said, so something I meant to show you, apologies before. So here, Ooh. when you see this little bubble and the number, that means that you've got comments underneath. Um, so you can always go and have a little look here. Um, and yeah, so we've got suggestions here. Um, so people have clearly been doing their own research as well because they've looked into it and so saying on account of being taken at night seems more likely that it's an opossum, which like in this case, they're correct. But you could also put under here, like if you're logging on for the first time, you're not quite sure. You can say, I'm not quite sure it's blurry. I'm wondering if it's X, Y or Z. I'm thinking this because of these reasons or has anybody got any tips like or again, like sort of um, scrolling through and having a look and yeah like you said because it, it can be blurry sometimes what we would love to do like sometimes like i said before when camera traps take images they do that in a burst of um sort of a sequence 
So actually the first one might be a bit blurry. The second one you might look at and think, oh, I know exactly what that is. And you wish you could go back and do the previous one. But that doesn't matter if you, you can't go back and do the previous one because we wanted your best guess. And like mm-hmm. I said, there are enough people who are experts or taking part who've got great knowledge. Like I said, we've got a really dedicated community of users who come back time and again and they know what it is that they're looking at so the idea is that you can just sort of learn as you go along and take part it's all about giving us your best guess having a go learning and having fun and sort of working with the community to sort of learn and improve so you don't need to worry about getting it wrong all right you said Roland had a question as well it's helpful for anyone who is in uh, who is a citizen scientist for a project like stall catchers, for example, they use machine learning to uh, make sure that they have um, the most accurate data as well, using thousands of people to answer the same mm-hmm. video. Um, so I'm assuming it's pretty similar to that, like just being the crowd, right, and having it learn from um, us making these yeah. uh, choices is it's a big impact. So any any educated guess and uh, best guesses are. Super yeah, and it, absolutely. Until we have 10 that say this is an impossible, that, that result wouldn't go to the scientists. So if we have like five people saying no animal, we can park that as a result. 10 people saying that's no possum, that would then go to the scientists. Whereas if like 25 people in, we've still nobody can agree. Somebody's tagged it as a tailor, someone said it's an agouti, someone said it's a raccoon, a squirrel, etc. Like that point, we just flag it for the attention of the scientists, just saying this is something that we can't do as a crowd. And mm-hmm. so then we can work on the comm side of that in terms of like, this is what, how we can talk about and educate people um, because clearly it's not, you know, happening at the moment and they're not able to recognize it or like working on ways of making it more effective. That's awesome. I'm glad to like, that's a, I'm, I, I'm excited to hear that version of things where it gets flagged for the scientists and then actually changes the way that people are taught to use it. That's super awesome. I love it. Um, Regarding accuracy school scores, uh, so Roland asked, is the accuracy score equal to the number of correct answers? For example, his total identifications idents are 245 and his accuracy score is 159 or only 65 correct. Mm-hmm. So is that how it's run? Like it's based on the number of identifications? So the way, the reason that you see that difference is that, so you go through, so you might have made 245 idents but until we have a confirmed result for those 245 idents we don't know what your accuracy score is and there might be a lag so like I talked about before about there being the 10 people that need to tag the one image if for like 50 of your images Roland you were the first person to tag those there will be a, a lag so until nine other people have said that there's no possum in that picture that won't tick over and turn up in your accuracy score so sometimes that's why there can be a delay and you sort of typically you'll have a lower accuracy score than you will your total number of idents because you're sort of playing catch up once everyone's tagged it and you sort of start to see um like that's how they sort of sync up together and hopefully you'd have the same number but obviously there are there are yeah it's, it's challenging as you can see animals don't always cooperate sometimes you get blurry shots of like fluffy bits of face or things like that and you just have to go with your best guess and be slightly less accurate but it's all good uh roland the fact that you did 245 identifications just as a heads up like <laughs> <laughs> great Thank applause you. for that that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> Um, awesome. Okay, I'm going to have us pause here since we're about six minutes out from the hour. Um, if there are any more questions, go ahead and drop them into the chat. Even if we don't address them now, um, we can always send them on and, and add the answers into the follow-up email afterwards. Um, so if there is anything, feel free to drop it in um, to the chat or the Q&A and we'll keep uh, track of it. Um, I'm going to have you remove, or I'll just Stop for just sharing. There we go. Um, so just really quickly, because someone asked about how you can tell if they're affiliates, um, I'm going to show you my screen of SciStarter for a moment. Um, so if you were to go to the project finder, which you can find up here. So I'm logged in. You don't have to be for this. Um, but when I hit projects here, it'll send me to the project finder. So it shows me everything right now, which recently we have added a bunch of quizzes, which is fun. Uh, but I'm going to type in instant wild. And after that, I'm actually going to type the ones that are SciStar affiliates. So only projects that are SciStar affiliates. I want only affiliates. And if I hit, uh, it actually automatically does it, but I'm going to go ahead and hit um, go again. And it shows me all the ones that are SciStar affiliates. 
So if you were to go on to um, Instant Wild and look for these names, you'll find them on Instant Wild and you'll know that those ones are the ones connecting. Um, at this point, it, since it's only the affiliation for a site starter, there's no marker on Instant Wild. Um, although I don't know how things might change in the future, but um, regardless, you can always rely on it being here for you to know which ones are I can be tracked. Um, regardless, you're still doing real science for real scientists on any of the projects. So you are more than welcome to add any of them. Um, okay, I'm going to move back to our presentation for a moment here. Again, um, this is such a cute picture of the same ocelot, I think. Is it the same ocelot? Yeah, it's the same. I, I, yeah, from the same location. It wouldn't surprise me if it's not the same. It's amazing. I random quick fun fact. My family used to live in a wooded area of Prescott, Arizona, which is a the Prescott National Forest. And their neighbor had a game camera, which is the same concept, just a different term for whatever reason. Um, and they had um a mountain lion just come on over and um attack another mountain lion. And they have like evidence of or they found a, a dead mountain lion murdered by another mountain lion. It was very sad, but it was like very intense pictures to like be able to see and witness it's like wow great great placement of that um horrific <laughs> it's a, but it's so fun to see them walking by you're like wow this is a residential neighborhood this is terrifying um but really cool to be able to see how close you are to nature you know mm -hmm. um all right, sorry, random random story aside, uh, we do these every week. So aside from today's, um, we do wanna make a note for every week we come back for these. Um, and next week we have preparation for the Super Bowl with the science cheerleaders. And then after that, we'll have a Valentine's Day special that we labeled Citizen Sciences for Lovers. Um, and we'd love to have you back. Um, and you can always check in on what's happening on the blog listed here at the bottom, uh, which Roland dropped into the chat for you already. Awesome. All right. A uh, couple more things just for very quickly. Uh, the citizensciencemonth.org is a um, just a, a, uh, a page that defines what Citizen Science Month is. Um, in April, we have the biggest push for programming, for participation, for everything, for you to really get out there, get on your uh, computer or go outside and do a citizen science project, a citizen science project excuse me. Um, if you're doing Instant Wild, that just means downloading the app and doing this during the month of April, just with more intention, right? So um, Citizen Science Month is just an opportunity for you to get involved in a lot of events and a lot of projects going on. Um, and this website will actually direct you to resources for you if you're interested in um, being a part of any events in your area as well. So quick plug for that, um, go ahead and look it up next time you get a chance. Um, as always, we have all these resources. If you ever need anything, you can send us an email. You can always contact project leaders through their uh, message project button on their SciStarter pages. Um, and there's a bunch of other um, community related things such as our podcast and our um, finding your new, uh, excuse me, finding your next project through um, the project finder that I showed you um, and all those other resources. We've got a ton um, and I'm rushing through that. I apologize. <laughs> so all in all, um, I'm going to end us there in a minute here, um, but I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Kate so much for showing us all of that. I know that I will be working on Instant Wild a lot more often now. I'm looking forward to that Apple, um, the Apple app to be um, fixed too, because I had downloaded it and I noticed that and I was like, oh man, not yet. Um, but I've been doing it on the website.